Okay, I it, I feel like it's time. If I go here, and he pushes, I'm gonna play this first. <laughs> it's not time. It's not time. This could be it. This could be the game that gets us back over 1700. I'm playing a 1510 game. We're rated 1698 right now, and Chess.com is searching for an opponent. I have changed my rating range to only play, yeah, you can see rating range there, only play people who are rated 50 ELO below me or infinite above me. And we get a game, he plays D4, let's play D6. So as you can see, we're, we're playing someone rated 1772, which is a very high rated opponent and he's playing kind of a Queen's Gambit style. Well, if, if my pawn was here, it, it would be a queen's gambit. But he's pushing these two pawns. Which kind of makes me excited. Because I think I can play like a king's Indian setup against this. Usually, I'm facing this against my setup. And I think that's a perk. A, a perk defense. Perk? Not perk. It's the Percocet defense. Let's play g6. But I think against this, the King's Indian setup is ideal. And I do enjoy playing the King's Indian. We have plenty of time to think. I have plenty of time to drink my Starbucks coffee. A vanilla sweet cream cold brew. That's my go-to. Okay. He's pushed all three pawns. I think I just continue with... Bishop g6 here. And trying to quickly castle and play e5. Okay. I don't think there's too much to think about, so... Not yet, at least. Mm -hmm. So it looks like he's preparing to castle kingside as well. Um, If I do this right now... And we have take, take. That's fine. So I can do this now because he didn't develop the knight here. So I'm wondering if I should push e5 now or play knight c6. Because if I play knight c6, he's going to have this move. And while I do think that that is okay in theory, like the knight goes back and you play c6, trying to disrupt the structure... I think I would prefer my knight to be able to reroute to e7 when this pawn is pushed. And if I do this, it will have that square. Oh, but if I do this and he pushes, I can't even develop the knight here. Hmm. What to do? Then I guess let's develop the knight first. Okay. And we don't see that. It's looking like he's going to expand on this side of the board. I'm going to play e5 now. I don't know if I'm too worried about him taking a bunch of space over here. Given that my king is over here. Let's see what he does. My opponent, my opponent is Mohammed Kamil from Egypt. Wow, that's pretty cool. They have some cool pyramids over there. Write in the comments if you think the aliens built the pyramids. Let's play. I feel like two ton bricks. Let's play. Knight e7, maybe? This is where I wanted the knight to be. So I think this is fine. And if he castles short, the plan in the king's Indian, and this is a very common plan, is to bring the knight back to e8 and push for f5. And if he takes back, yeah. So I think I'm going to continue with this plan. And we're going to push f5. And if he takes, I take back with the pawn. 
I'm going to try to close things down, bring the king onto the h file, bring the rook onto the g file, and attack. Ooh. Okay. So, if he takes me, I can take with the pawn. And I don't think I'm ever worried about plans like this. Take, take. Um, if he takes me, what if I play f5? And we have take, take. He's going to have to do something about this. So, like, takes with the knight. I take back. Then our rooks are staring at each other. And if he trades... This is an interesting move. I could take myself. That's an idea. Could also play my bishop here. This diagonal has opened up. He's probably going to want to put a bishop on this file. So I would love to get a queen on that file before he can get a bishop. Maybe. So something like c6. And if he took, I go here. I mean, he's in time to do this. I could play f6. But that allows him to push here and then take my king's getting opened up. My king's getting opened up on, on his plan, not my plan. So f5 here, take, I take, say, I think I will play f5. And if he takes, I take. He takes, I take. We're closing things down. Okay. Yeah, I think f5 kind of allows us to maintain our like our, our King's Indian plan of taking with the G pawn, maybe pushing for f4, having two pawns here. Sliding the king over. And attacking. So that's what I'm going to go for. <clears throat> the little tiny ice in the Starbucks drinks annoy me greatly. Because they come through the, the hole. And you just have little tiny ice things in your mouth. Get bigger ice, Starbucks. <laughs> okay, he's thinking here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he takes. Now, I think I want to take back with my pawn rather than the bishop. And if he takes here, I take back with the pawn rather than the knight or the bishop. Slide the king over. And go on this attack. I could play this move, but I really, I don't like that. Just visually, like I go here and he's recapturing back. I like taking. I like taking. And if he takes again, I think the correct move is taking with the pawn. It looks pretty sketchy. It looks sketchy. Hmm. It looks sketchy. But I'm going to do it. Take, take. He goes here. I would push. Take, take. Bishop comes in, I would push, and the bishop's kind of stuck on my side, and then I have move like this, bishop back, 
night out. Bishop is kind of stuck here. Queen, maybe. Knight can come here and attack the bishop even. That's probably what would happen. Knight coming here, attacking the bishop. So take, take. Bishop, trap the bishop. If bishop goes back, the knight comes in. And we're going to get that bishop. Probably have to play knight here first. And then knight g6. So that the bishop doesn't take my queen. I don't think I'm ever too worried about stuff like this. Because I just have too many pieces over here that are defending these squares. I think we'll probably see takes here. But I don't know. Maybe not. It kind of looks visually good for me. Like, I'll... After take, take, I'm controlling all of these squares. I have, like, this big blockade here. My pieces can maneuver behind. Okay. Okay. Um... Very tempted by this move. I play f4, and the knight doesn't have this square, doesn't have this square. It literally has to go right back. So here, the knight has to go right back. It locks in this pawn. The bishop is staring into it. The knight, like this knight, is, is visually dominated. Like if the knight has to go back to this square, this knight only has like this square to get into my position and it just gets kicked out. So this knight is restricted. The bishop is restricted. This knight is restricted. It shuts out the bishop. It seems pretty good. Okay. Now, bishop here seems appealing. It pins the knight. Not that the knight can go anywhere. But it also induces h3. Do we want to induce h3? Is that a will that be a weakness? A hook? I think I I like the idea of doing this just to induce just just to induce h3. And then even going right back to d7. And and then we have this hook. I can play knight f6 now. I can also play here. I think I'm going to go g5. Begin pushing all of our pawns. And doing the thing. Doing the king's Indian attack. The trick is you put your tongue, you put your tongue in the hole, and that way the, the little ice can't can't stream th through. Okay. Okay. I th I really like my position. I think we've done a good job here. G4, F3 even? G4, F3, and then if he pushes G3, that, that becomes the hook. And then we play H4, H5 to disrupt that G3 pawn. So like here, here. If he takes, I mean, we take back. Whoa. Yeah, I was never really worried about this plan because I just take... I just take back. If he takes, I take with the knight. And I don't really see how he's getting... I could play a6, but I think I want to... I think I want to attack. I think I ignore everything happening over here. On this side of the board. And attack. And g4 looks tempting. g4... 
I would not want to play this because he just locks everything down. So g4 here. And if he pushes the pawn, I obviously take the knight. g4 here. He moves the knight. I take the pawn in front of his king. Seems pretty good. I have h4, g4. Or h5, g4. And here, and maybe here. Hmm. That knight is still dominated. I think I want to keep it that way. So let's play h5. h5, g4. h4, h3 would be ideal. Okay, I don't know what this does. It does this. So he can push d6 now with a discovered check. And he can win the knight. Um, but I wanted my king on the h file anyways. I wanted my king on the h file anyways. So that I could bring a rook over. Um, but do I want my king here or here? I think I'm going to move the king to h8. His pieces are still so restricted. Like, bishop can't go anywhere. This bishop can't go anywhere. The knight is completely restricted. Both knights, really. Like I said, this is kind of the only other developing square to get in my, into my position. And I, if I play a6, it's, they're just completely cut out. And this is coming. Some combination of pawn moves. <laughs> I don't know if I want to keep pushing the pawns and and kind of open things up right now, or if I want to start bringing the pieces, because I could play things like knight f6, knight g6, bishop here, rook here, bring the queen. I can start doing all of that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like he can just, just can't do anything. So I could play g4 now. And I think I'm going to start bringing the pieces now. He's just letting me encroach slowly but surely. So I think h4, h3 is the way. Because if he pushes here, I take. I mean, we can trade here, but trade. Rook comes, bishop comes right back. Here, here. If this happens, here. Check here. If the rook came, we would have check again. King would have to take. Then we can move the bishop. Start bringing the pieces. I could even move the knight here to defend the bishop. Or this knight. Like here. Defend with the queen. This looks pretty scary. <clears throat> yeah, and you just <laughs> I feel like he just he's just not doing anything about it because he can't. He just has to keep shuffling pieces over here. Like, what does this do? It does nothing. Okay, h4. Seems pretty good. h4, h3. If he takes this way, this whole file's opened up. 
Okay, I'm gonna start moving the pieces, like I said, because I still feel like he can't do anything. If I go here and he pushes this way, I feel like I get this and then this. Seems pretty devastating. Um, so let's start going. Here and here. The knight can come here. Bishop can come here. Maybe I did want the king here. King here makes sense because it supports the bishop here. If the f4 pawn ever ever gets pushed or taken. It's something to look at after the game. Whether or not king here or here was better. Okay, his king slides over. Now I go here. <laughs> His pieces. I guess the knight can come back here. No. Which seems pretty decent, actually. Now I need to be careful about which pawn I, I break with. And I think even before I do that, I want to start bringing the pieces more. So both of my knights could be developed onto the third rank. And control all of these squares. Just further reinforcing. Which makes sense, right? We've we've gained all of this space, and now it's time to like really bunker down and defend all of this space. That kind of makes sense. So Bishop was attacking this pawn. This kind of felt very natural. Defending and Developing. Knight here feels very natural. Yeah, he's having to move all of his pieces <laughs> onto the back rank here. And at some point, we're going to bust through. At some point. I could bring my queen here. Which seems very good. Queen before the knight. This is kind of aesthetic. <laughs> what a weird position. Do I have this? If I do this and he pushes and I sacrifice, he takes with a knight and the queen's head. I don't like that. If I do this and he takes, and I take, and then I takes. What if I do this and take, take? Hmm. I could develop the knight. If I do develop the knight, he has this. Take, take. I like that the knight is defending this square. Um. I'm going to develop the bishop to d7, just so the rook is doing something now. I would love for this to just be shut down, like this move in here. Maybe bishop h6 and knight here. Go knight here, just to control this square a little bit more. Okay, queen. Take, 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 take. And the knight would take. 
Hmm. Let's develop our knight. Maybe knight h5. I don't think I'm worried about this because after take, take, the pawn's kind of blockaded by the bishop. Bishop feels pretty safe. other rook makes a lot of sense. <laughs> this is a very strange position. Maybe knight here. So knight here. What if we double up on the F file and then we push? Because take, take, this takes, take, rook takes, rook takes, queen takes. Blah. What if queen takes? My bishop is defending. I love this game so far. Check would be cool. Like maybe I want my rooks in this file somehow. I don't know. Okay, I it, I feel like it's time. If I go here and he pushes, I push. I'm gonna play this first. <laughs> it's not time. It's not time. Okay, if I play here and he takes, and I take. Okay, I do this. He takes. I take. The knight takes. Here, 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 take, let's go here. Oh, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. I'm so nervous. What's going to happen? I think I'll push and I think I should take because it opens up this file. The rooks are seeing each other. I feel like things will go my way. I just feel like things will go my way. Because his pieces are so restricted. Like mine at least have squares they can go back to. Whoa, he takes? Okay, what if I go here? If I go here, what if I go here and he goes here, then I take, here, take, I take the queen. Here, he has to move the queen. He, if he moves the queen here, he loses a piece. You take, I retreat. So he can't move the queen here. I go here and he moves the queen here. Do I trade? Take. He takes with the bishop. I take. He takes. I take here. What if I push here? And we have take, take, take. If I push here and he takes, I take. I'm threading this. If he takes with the queen, One of these is such a good move. I 
think I'm going to push. Because if he takes and I take, he can't take back. And now I have a pawn here controlling these two squares. And like maybe I can sacrifice here. Knight takes, I play this move. And like, what does he do? King comes here maybe. But then I'm pushing this. Takes back, takes back. This is way too much to calculate. It's way too much to calculate. So I'm kind of just going on my intuition. Um, like I see that this is a, a forkable square. Um, so it feels kind of good. Okay. What about this move? I can't do that. I have check. Queen takes. I could just go back here. If I go back here and he takes, I take. This feels fine. I, th I don't think taking is a good move. Uh, the bishop is hitting this pawn, which will hit the rook. And get the rook off of this file. Yeah, it feels really sketchy for him. And I can even take and then come back and pin the knight to the queen. If he ever takes... Then the queen's coming in. Given that this knight can leave. That knight is defending that square, which is really good. Maybe I can put my knight on this square and try to trade. But I think we should take this pawn first. Like, what does he play here? I think I'm going to leave this tension. I'm not going to take. Because he just takes with the queen, the rook's coming over. He feels feels like he's getting defended. This rook's coming over. I feel like taking is a mistake. I should let him take, take. Because I, I like controlling these two squares. Queen here, maybe, is a good move to protect this. So queen here. But then I go here. And we have trade. And now I'm hitting this anyways. And if he takes, I pin the queen and the rook. Hmm. Yeah, very hard to think of a move for him. So queen here is what I came up with, and I think I just play this move. I hit the queen, I hit the knight, we trade. The bishop's coming in if he ever takes. Whoa, okay. Now if I take... I can just take. If the bishop takes, I fork the king and the queen. If, if this happens and this happens... Then I go here. So here, here, I would just take. So here, if I play this move, I could go in with the knight, check, he has to take, I take. I could just play this move. And where does he go? Let's take. Let's just take. I, he's going to move the knight somewhere, maybe? To try to unleash this discovery? You know, if all else fails, I could just take. Queen takes. Rook takes. Bishop takes. 
If he goes here, I obviously just take... Bishop here's coming, followed by this. Queen can always just slide over. Or even back to g7, maybe. Like if knight comes back here. I slide back to g7. Or I could even just do this now. Right? So queen here. Let's go queen here. <clears throat> the rooks are looking at each other. I could even play bishop here now because this pawn is pinned. I don't know what that account. Well, it wins the knight, maybe. Yeah, I can just go here. And if he takes my rook, I take the queen. check okay yeah I have check if he moves the rook I get the queen oh but then he gets my queen hmm so maybe I just take yeah just take the rook if he takes the bishop it's checkmate if he takes with the queen I take with the rook His queen is hit. Okay, but now I have check. And I can just take the knight now. And I'm threatening checkmate here. Nice. What a game. What a game. <laughs> We'll see how how good I did in the in the eval. Okay, one blunder and four mistakes. I'll switch to the game review. And let's see. <laughs> 67.9% accuracy. Play like a 1450. Okay. Let's go through the game. Okay, all of this was normal. King Indian, King's Indian defense, normal variation. Yep. We push E4 at the right time. And this is an inaccuracy, really. Does it want knight back to B8? What does the engine say? Knight D4. Hop into the center. And we trade. And then knight E2. And then C5. And if en passant. Then B takes, knight takes, and I take E4, whoa, because if the bishop takes, I have rook E8 pinning it. If he castles, I take the bishop, but that's his best move is to castle. Okay, and now this is hit twice, so knight takes C6, yeah, that's this is a wild line, okay. I went knight back, castles, 98, and then f5 was good, okay. Take, take was good, push was good, and then g5 was good. Okay, this is our first mistake. It wanted knight g6, which is logical. It's developing the knight 
to a better square. We played it eventually. So this is a mistake and this is a miss because he had this. Whoa, what? And if I take, then rook takes f8, king takes, and then bishop takes g5. Bishop takes g5, I play check. He plays king h1, he doesn't even take back. Knight f6. Queen d2. Yeah, I don't understand this line. Guess he's trying to go here. Um, and my king is open, I guess. The rook's coming. Okay. That's a pretty wild line, though. Yeah, I, d I don't think a normal person is going to play knight g3 here. And c take. Because that's, that's an equal trade. He just gives up a knight. You have to see, like, the long-term advantage. That's a pretty tough move to play. I play h5. And then I play king h8. Okay. g4 is an inaccuracy. Rook g8 is a mistake. And this is a miss. He had this. I wasn't really afraid of this. I saw take. Bishop takes f4. What? Bishop takes f4. Is that right? Am I seeing that right? I take. Queen f7. Okay. I mean, I, again, I don't think uh, I don't think a normal person is going to play that. So if this is a mistake because of <laughs> this move, then okay, I'm bad at chess. That's a brilliant move. Yeah, I don't think anyone's ever going to find that. This is a miss because of knight g6. That's a miss because he sacrifices on f4. Okay. I don't think anyone's ever going to do that. This protects against that f4 sacrifice. The knight goes back. Queen comes in. Bishop. Okay, so I did have this move here. How does this work? So I take... His best move is g takes f3. I play g3. Oh. His best move is h takes... I play h takes, and now there's an open file here. I play bishop here. That's the only move. Wait, what? That's the only move? The only move is to sacrifice your bishop. And then play rook d2 to guard against everything. That's crazy. But it makes sense. Like, he's getting ready to play check. So my best move here is bishop h6. So probably try to run the run the king. Or queen here to meet check with bishop h6. Rook h2, bishop h6, yeah. And then I run the king. Okay. I played bishop here. Knight bringing all of my forces. Um... Rook, it's a mistake. This is good. This is good. And this is bad. This is a mistake. I had a sacrifice here. So if take, bishop takes g3, h takes. If this happens, then I have f takes, bishop a6, queen h4 check. The knight has to block. I take the knight, and the king has to run. Wow. Take the bishop. Yeah, that's crazy. And this, he has to go here. Take, take. Looks pretty good. Okay. Okay. Pushing g3 was good. It also liked f3. But... I'm happy with g3. The knight came and the queen came right back, which is which is good. Okay. He takes. Taking with the knight was better, so this is an inaccuracy. But we're still completely winning. The knight comes back. And queen into h4 was good. Bishop here was good. Check was good. Oh, I just had check again. What did I do? 
What am I what am I smoking? I just said check again and I pick up the queen. Hmm. But this led to this led to me. What did I do? I took with the rook. And he can't take because that's mate in one. Very nice. Very, very nice. Uh, I think he resigns in this position. Yep. Um, well, that was a really good game. Uh, we are rated 1708. We're back over 1700. Um, let's see if we can keep it going. Thanks for watching, everybody. Like and subscribe if you join the content. Thank you.